There are several different ways we can finish a quilt. Today, we're going to face one. Join us. I'm pretty sure I've said it before, but at Experience the Quilt, we love to finish your quilts. We love to finish with thread and quilting or couching. Do you know what couching is? It's sewing soft, fluffy chenille yarn onto the top of a quilt. Isn't this fun? I can't, I can't stop couching. I find all kinds of things that I love to add yarn to. This has yarn in the middle and yarn on the, on the borders. It's just so fun and it just makes such a difference on a quilt. So today we're going to talk about facing a quilt. So you measure the exact size of the top of your quilt. I have measured and cut out the exact size of, for my backing. Then I'm going to place the backing of my quilt right over top on uh, right sides together over the top of my quilt top. You can pin this to help it stay in place. I like to use binding clips. This is a form of binding. So I have these little fun binding clips. They're really cheap. You can, get, you can get hundreds of them for like, you know, $6 or something like that. I can't even remember. It's been too long since I bought them. But I just can put a couple on there to hold it in place so it just stays nice and straight because if you've watched any of my videos before, you know I don't like to pin. So I love that I can find a quick little tool that helps me save time, save energy, save my fingers. And it helps me make the quilt look just a little bit better. I'm all about efficiency. So I've just added a few clips, not even a ton, just a little bit to hold that backing right where I want it. Now I'm going to, I've got a quarter inch foot, um, presser foot on my sewing machine. And I'm going to sew, <clears throat> I gotta adjust this a little bit. I can see that I didn't get it quite exactly where I want it. I want it just exactly edges meeting, okay? And then I'm going to start sewing right on the edge. It doesn't matter where you start, but it's a quarter inch from the edge of my quilt with a straight stitch. I just remove the clips as I find, as I get to them. I love my Foth machine because it has this walking foot that is a, built into the machine and it just takes the top and the back together so nicely and I don't have to worry about it slipping around or being out of place. When I get to the corner, I'm gonna make sure it's nice and straight and then I'm going to Put my needle down, my presser foot comes up just a little bit. It's a nice thing about this machine. It's my favorite thing about this machine. And I'm going to follow, it looks like I'm not following, but I am right along that edge. I didn't get that fabric quite where I wanted it. Or else I must have cut it a little bit larger. It's best if you can get it right the same size as your top so you can see it pretty easily. So I'm just about to the end of my quilt. I'm not going to leave an opening like you normally would think. We're going to sew it all the way up to the very end where we started. All the way off. I'm going to trim my threads and now we're going to pull the middle of the back okay and I make sure I don't have the top of my quilt it's separated I'm going to clip into it just like that and I'm going to come up 
to the top and leave about two inches around the edge of my quilt. This is one way to face. There are other ways where you can just sew strips and do the same thing. And sometimes I do that as well. If you don't wanna waste fabric that you're cutting out of the middle, I won't waste this, I'll use it for another quilt. But um, I like this way. I feel like it's a little bit faster and a little bit easier than if I were to sew the strips on because um, I just feel like I have a little more control over how tight the quilt is, the facing is on the back of the quilt. Maybe that's just me, but that's how I feel. I've done several quilts different ways and this, is, this has been one of my favorites. So now I have this big extra piece that will just go in my scraps and I can use it for another quilt. So now we have, it looks like a little frame and what we're going to do, make sure our iron is on and hot. I'm going to trim any excess fabric or corners. So I'm gonna cut across, I'm gonna trim away that extra fabric because because we're turning this and this is already quilted and has a lot of bulk, we don't want any extra bulk in there that we don't need, no excess bulk. So don't cut through your, through your threads, but you're gonna come and cut along, cut your corner off like that. Oh, my garbage can is moved. <laughs> Cut it like that. Cut another corner here. And I'm going to trim this up because I didn't get that backing as straight as I thought I did. See, we all make mistakes in quilting. It happens. Won't matter. It's your quilt. It's going to be beautiful. So now I'm just flipping like you do a pillowcase um, and oh, my little purple thing is not over here. It's on the table, but you just can use um, a pencil or, you know, whatever you need to get those corners pushed out nice and sharp. There we go. So here's the back of our quilt and now our little frame is on the back. Just gonna make sure those corners are pushed out where I want them. And it doesn't really matter if you use a pencil because it's inside, no one's ever gonna see it if you mark it up. <laughs> now, we have our frame. I'm going to pull this facing fabric tight to the back. I want to pull the front of our quilt just barely to the back. Okay. If I pull that to the back and I press it that way, it's going to give me a nice, oh, I didn't catch that very well right there. I'll have to fix that. It's going to give us a nice, um, sharp, it's, it's not going to show our facing fabric on the front of our quilt. Does that make sense? If I were to iron it like this, you'll see this this facing fabric you don't want that you want to pull it and press it so that the facing fabric and that the front of your quilt is towards the back if that makes sense i mean i just use a nice hot iron to get it where i want it which is sometimes it's hard with this much quilting and layers but you can do it You might need to use a little steam to encourage it along. I don't put steam in my iron, so I have my little trusty mister bottle that is running out of water. <laughs> Here's my bigger mister bottle, and I can spray that a little bit and press it, and it will, you just kind of force it. Like you, you're the boss, you tell the quilt where you want it to go, right? And you're just going to, just barely, you don't want too much of your beautiful quilt turned to the back. Just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and do that around the rest of our quilt. So, 
Okay, so what I've been doing after I pressed all those edges, I've now gone to this inside edge here and I'm pressing it under just a little bit, just taking a little edge and pressing it under. So it gives us a nice clean finished edge. Okay. And then we're going to whip stitch it by hand closed. Now, this doesn't look like a typical traditional blanket where you have everything quilted and bound normally because it's not quilt. And sometimes your art quilts, you just want to have a nice finished look on the front without a binding because that a lot of times will give it a frame and sometimes you don't want that frame. But see how nice that is? It turns the edge under and it just looks so clean and crisp and finished. So I'll, all I have to do next is just take a needle and thread and you're gonna just whip stitch this down right along here. And as I sew, I kind of just keep it pulled taut where I want it. And I'm gonna just catch the back of the quilt, not the front. I'm just gonna go under a little layer and whip stitch it all the way around and put my label on it and we'll be all set. Thanks for joining me on Experience the Quilt. I hope you've enjoyed our art quilt series and I hope that you are getting adventurous and trying your own. Don't forget to like and subscribe.